Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What's next? Perhaps you've been asking that question all week, like I have. What's next? How do we possibly follow up the Reformation 500? Where do we go to from here? We had trumpets and brass, choir and organ, hands. We had powerful preaching and a gospel message that remains the same yesterday, today, and forever, that it's still all about Jesus. What's next? Perhaps, like me, you've been wondering, is this weekend's worship going to be a letdown? Is it going to fail in comparison to last week's awesome service? Are we going to have to wait 500 more years before we get a worship service like this again? What's next? Today I have good news for you, and that good news is that today is not going to be a letdown. But today, in fact, is going to be an amazing worship service. And it's not because Mr. Wenzel put together a nice bulletin. It's not because of the organ, and it's not because of praise team. It's not because of trumpets or brass or choirs. And it's not even because we'll have creative preaching. But today will be an awesome worship service because God is present. And he's here giving gifts to his people. God is present once more today as his word was read and his word is now proclaimed. God is present as you will come forward to the altar and you will receive Christ himself, his very body and blood, for your forgiveness for life, and for salvation. Where God is, worship is amazing. And so what's next? Well, it's hearing that gospel message read right afresh for us this very day. And today, we get to celebrate. We had the Reformation last week, and today we get to celebrate All Saints Day. That day that we get to remember, we get to give thanks for the baptized, for the faithful, for those who are gathered with us this morning, and those who have departed, who have died in faith in Christ Jesus. And I would suggest to you that as we celebrate this All Saints Day, this question of what's next is a question that the saints have been asking for a long time. When you were little, this question took on one form, and as you got older, it took on another. But the question really remains the same. When you were little, it was asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? When you were finishing high school, it was asked, what do you want to study in college? Where do you want to go? As you finished college, it might be asked of you, well, what job do you want to get? Later in life, it might be asked, do you want to pursue a career change? And towards the end, when you have some gray hair, you might be asked, and what are your plans for retirement? <coughs> the questions are really all the same. What's next? They are a recognition that you are always somewhere and someone now, and you are always going somewhere to become someone. And so the question remains for us today, who am I now, and what will I be then? In our epistle lesson for today, St. John gives us an answer. And not just any answer, he gives us God's answer as to who we are now and what we will be then. He says these words, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called the children of God, and so we are. The Father, in his great love for you, has made you his child. Uh, not just in thought, not just spiritually, but already now you are the children of God. And our Father in heaven and St. John, who writes these words, they believe in family resemblances. 
You and I, we, we talk like this, don't we? We say things like, like father, like son. The apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. But family resemblances are, are more than just cliches. They're, they're actual real resemblances. They're, they're real uh, appearances. You look alike. When we finally had my, my second child, Luke, I was thrilled when he came because I finally had a child that looked like me. If you've seen my oldest, Leah, who's four, she looks just like her mother. You couldn't even tell she's mine until she opens her mouth. <laughs> Family resemblances mean uh, you have similar mannerisms. Uh, the way dad talks with his hands, maybe it's the way the child talks with their hands. The way mom is artistic, perhaps the way the children are artistic. As maybe dad gets angry and he furls his eyebrows and, and the vein starts to poke out, uh, maybe the child does the same thing. As the parent laughs, so the children laugh. And for St. John, he says that as the children of God, you are then going to resemble your Father in heaven. He says, in fact, you are the spitting image of your Father. You are the living, the breathing representative, the living and dying and rising image of the Father in whom there is no darkness at all, but only light, in whom always and only pure and powerful, dying and rising and living love. Now truthfully, you perhaps don't always resemble your father. There is only one son, one son by right and by deed, and that would be Jesus. Jesus fully resembles the Father both now and in eternity. And he is the one who gave himself for all. As he dies on a cross, as he rises from the grave, as he sits at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. Jesus is really the only true Son. But see what sort of love the Father has given to us that we should be called the children of God. It shouldn't be true. And it certainly wasn't easy for us to become God's children. St. John tells us in both his gospel and his other letters just how we became the children of God. He said you had to be reborn. He said you were once living in darkness and you had to be brought to the light. He says we were once living in a lie and we had to be brought to the truth. After all, if we were so foolish to say we have no sin, we would deceive ourselves and the truth would not be in us. But see what sort of love the Father has given to us. Because of the promises, as the water hits your head, you get to become the children of God. Because of the promises that you see, that you hear, and that you believe, you get to become the children of God. You get to become the children of God because of the Son of God. And surprisingly and incredibly, that's what we are now. And so, children of God, I would ask you, What's next? What do you want to be when you grow up? What is the future going to hold for you? These are questions that I don't know, and truthfully, none of us know. But the Father knows, and he's telling. Hear what he has to say. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. There is God's answer to that question, and if you would believe it, it would be your answer to that question as well. You are God's children now, and one day you will be like Jesus. As he is love, so you will be loved. As he is pure, so you will be pure. 
As he loves and does righteousness, so you will love and do righteousness. As he loves you, so you will love one another. And when he appears on that glorious last day, you will be like him. On that day, seeing Jesus will be enough. It'll mean we'll be changed. You and I will be like God wants us to be, children of God who look like the Son of God. And so I invite you in faith, then, to answer this question. What's next? And the answer, of course, is, I will be like Jesus. Today we remember on this All Saints Day, especially our loved ones who have died in faith and are now with Christ Jesus, our Lord. Those who have died in faith no longer dimly resemble their Father. You don't have to squint or or strain your eyes to loosely see the family resemblance. No, now they are like John says in his first reading that we had today from Revelation. They are the ones in white robes. They are the ones who are pure and holy and sinless, looking just like their brother Jesus, who is pure and holy and sinless. And so as we remember our loved ones, As we see the family resemblance, we see Christ more clearly. And so now, surprisingly, you are the children of God. And then, amazingly, you will be like Jesus. In such a way, if I may be frank, that you will then be a joy and a privilege to be with forever. But until then... As you live as a child of God now, purify yourself. When you see sin in your life, when you see darkness in your life, when you see someone who more resembles a child of the devil than the child of the Heavenly Father, purify yourself. If it's anger, apathy, discontent for a brother or sister in Christ, purify yourself. If it's temptation for sexual sin, if it's a refusal to reconcile, if it's a refusal to get along and to be kind and compassionate to one another, purify yourself. Give it over to the cleansing blood of your Savior, Jesus. Turn away from the darkness and turn to the light. Do not, in fact, make a practice of sinning. In fact, stop sinning and turn in repentance to your Heavenly Father. And live the new life that's in you, because you are a child of God now. And so honor one another. Give yourselves over to one another that you might be a community that radiates light and draws others into this light. Do this because of who you will one day be. Do not abide in sin, but abide in Christ. For you are the children of God now. And one day, you will be like Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.